Well, good morning, South Lakewood family, those that are watching our live stream, uh, those that are under the weather, uh, dealing with sicknesses. Um, that is why we're uh, live streaming today. Welcome. Uh, I hope and pray that uh, everyone had a uh, Merry Christmas. Hope everyone had a great New Year and uh, look forward to God doing great things uh, this coming year. I want to share a couple of announcements with you uh, this morning. Uh, South Lakewood men are iron strengthening iron. Uh, Bible study will start back up this Thursday at 9 o'clock as we continue our journey through uh, the book of Acts. And so uh, we, we invite all men that are able to, to come be a part of the, this time of fellowship, time of Bible study, time of accountability, uh, time of prayer uh, from 9 to 10 on Thursday morning, okay? Also, I want to encourage each and every uh, church member as we start this new year, will you join with me as we read through God's Word together uh, this year? Uh, we will have some reading plans that you can pick up uh, in the foyer here at the church this week also. If you would like to, to build your own reading plan, you can go to BibleReadingPlanGenerator.com and you can put in the number of days, however long you want it to take, and it will generate a reading plan. And so I want to encourage each and every one, uh, young and old, uh, this year, let us uh, read through God's Word together. And as God speaks to each and every one of us, as he reveals himself to us, let us grow together uh, in the Lord, okay? And so uh, please do that. Uh, each one, there is no reason why uh, we cannot read uh, together. Uh, there really isn't an excuse of not being able to read uh, God's word. And so uh, let's do that together and Let's look forward and be excited to see where God uh, takes us through his word. Okay, let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to uh, start a new year. Uh, Lord, we look forward to uh, what you want to do in and through us this year as individuals as a church. Lord, as we come together and, and read your word, I pray that you reveal yourself even more to us uh, this year. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. Lord, we want to worship him this morning as we look at your word, Lord, and uh, as we follow Christ, Lord, reveal more to us, strengthen us, Lord, encourage us this year. Lord, help us to look to this year with eyes of boldness and courage. May they be eyes of faith, knowing that you are in control, Lord, but whatever you ask us to do. You're there with us by our side. You equip us, you enable us, you empower us. And Lord, please remind us of that through your word. Lord, we have many that are dealing with sickness. Lord, we are dealing with loss. Lord, I ask that you heal. Lord, make us well. Enable us to come back together and, and worship you corporately. Lord, we continue to pray for the Holly family 
Lord, the death of Daniel still stings and it hurts. But Lord, we know he's worshiping with you. He's with you today. And Lord, we rejoice in that also. But Lord, may we continue the fight. May we continue the journey. May we continue striving to fulfill your purpose that you have for us. Lord, bless us with your word this morning. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn to the book of John. John chapter, uh, John chapter 6 this morning. And you know, church family, uh, if I can be honest, the ending of 2021, for me personally, and I think it's safe to say uh, for the life of South Lakewood, it was rough. I have never been so ready for a new year to start than it in 2022 as a church as individuals we've experienced difficulties we've experienced hardships there are questions being asked that we'll probably never have in the answers to uh, we ended the year with sickness And the questions that we do have, why? We have the questions of what do we do now? Questions of where do we go? Questions of how do we get there? And I'll be honest, those, those questions just kind of ran over and over and over in my mind as, as um, spending time with God and, and trying to uh, figure out the direction. And I'll be honest, <laughs> it was almost like God just speaking. But the answer was simple. What do we do after facing what we have faced? What do we do going into 2022? It, it, it's simple. Folks, we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. Jesus is the answer. You know, in the days that we live in, in social media, uh, there, there's a... There is a term that is used of following someone, and, and, and the, the term or tool is used is, is this, that you hashtag something. And hashtags, there's four things that are used for a hashtag. And that's the, one is this, hashtags simplify the process. A searching a hashtag pulls results from each post using that hashtag. Using the hashtag helps you reach a, a target audience. It makes it easier for others to find your information on social uh, media. Number two about a hashtag is this, is they compel an action. When a user sees a, a post that is of interest, they will likely spend time looking through the content brought up by that hashtag. Another reason is this, is that, that hashtags evolve. Hashtags are being used by more and more platforms, impacting the, the amount of information put directly in front of, uh, of a social media user. And of course, they, they re reward the distinctive. Hashtags make finding information easier for social media users. A unique hashtag makes your message stand out to the users who, who find the hashtag valuable. It identifies a specific subject. 
And if you may, as we follow Jesus, what the social media users would do, will, will do is hashtag Jesus. The information that we gain from Jesus as, as we follow him is information that, that uh, benefits our life. You see, following Jesus, not only do we see his actions, we read his words. Through his word, we see his thoughts. But most importantly, as we follow Jesus, following the life of Christ, folks, it changes our lives. That's what I want us to do this year. This come this the beginning of this year is we follow Jesus. See, as we we follow Jesus and we follow him through his word, we see Jesus making some astounding as- statements. And in the book of John, we see seven to be exact. Each statement that that jesus makes he makes with uh the term i am this same statement that was given to moses at the burning bush when moses asked for god's name i am when it was spoken to moses means i am the the self existing one and as we follow jesus and as jesus speaks As Jesus states, I am, he is declaring the deity of God in the flesh. I think in difficult times, trying times, we just need to be reminded of who Christ is and and how being God, he works through our lives. I like what John MacArthur says here about the book of, about John. He says, John's approach in his gospel is to record Jesus' miracles briefly, matter-of-factly, and without fanfare, explanations, or, or, or defense. For example, the apostle describes the astonishing miracle of feeding the 5,000 simply, straightforward, unpretentious words. Jesus then took the loaves, And having given thanks, he distributed those who were seated. Likewise, also the fish as much as they wanted. John describes Jesus' equally astounding miracle of walking on the water in similarly uh, modest terms. Then when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, drawing near to the boat, and they were frightened. It's interesting to note that it's almost as though the the apostle uh, hurries through the accounts of Christ's miracles to to get to his words. While his miracles revealed his divine power, it's the words of Christ that correctly define who he is. And folks, I think we just need to be reminded of who Christ is. You see, Jesus is not just a mere miracle worker. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the promised Messiah. See, his miracles authenticate him and his message is coming from God. But signs, listen folks, signs and wonders alone are not enough for salvation. Jesus did signs to prove who he was. But miracles don't save. I think that's the problem that that we have. We want to see works. 
We want to see stuff. Yet if we would just listen to Jesus, follow Jesus, get to know Jesus more. It's in difficult times that we realize just what kind of peace is available. In in John chapter 6, Jesus makes three statements. Our text is actually John uh, chapter 6. Verses 24 all the way to 57. We're not going to read all that this morning. But for context's sake, Jesus has just did the miracle of feeding the 5,000 with the, the loaves and the fish. He leaves the crowd. He goes to the mountain. The disciples get in the boats. The next day, they find that that Jesus is on the other side, wondering how uh, how they they uh, they they, how he got there. How he says in verse twenty five, Rabbi, how comest thou hither? And Jesus answering them said, Very, very, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were, were filled. Here's this, this multitude that goes looking. They find Jesus on the other side asking how, uh, how we got there. And, and Jesus, being who he is, being God, already knows the hearts of men. They weren't really seeking him. They were sad. They just want more bread. They want more food. And three statements that that rocks their their world, three statements that we find in in this portion, in verse 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He says in verse 48, I am the bread the bread of life. And then he goes on, pardon me, in verse 52. I am the living bread. Not only just the bread of life, I am the living bread which did come down from heaven. And if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that which I give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. You know, just like the folks that we read about here in in John chapter 6, or just like the folks around us today, people just want to be continuously filled by their mouths and, and not their hearts. Jesus performed miracles and did the signs so they that they would believe. But yet people continuously refused. He wanted them to to believe that he was the one sent from heaven. Yet they wanted a repeat performance of uh, of a miraculous performance that they had just experienced. How sad it is when it comes to to serving God, to worshiping God, to, to, let's just say, attending church. Many just want a performance. Many want to to be able to feel good. People don't want to be changed. Why? Because change makes us uncomfortable. Change makes us ask the difficult question. Change makes us give up many times the things that that we don't want to give up. 
We like what we have, and we want more of it. That's why these here in John, they experienced the, the, the bread that Jesus gave, the fish that Jesus gave. Oh, the next day, oh, I'm hungry again. Jesus, do it more. And sadly, that's how Jesus is treated. And that sadly, those that, that claim a relationship with Jesus treat Jesus that way. One said, well, Pastor Scott, that, that's a bold statement. How, ca- how could you possibly say that? Well, we look later on in the chapter, what happens when Jesus starts uh, speaking the difficult words? These people say, forget this. If he's not going to do them, the miracles. We don't want any part of this. When he starts talking about here, and what we'll read in a moment, of, of eating his flesh and, and drinking his blood, th- this is, uh-uh, I did not sign up for this. And so what do we see? As long as I am filled, I'm going to be happy. We allow every single little excuse to keep us from serving God. We allow every single little excuse to keep us from following God. It's amazing. We don't have the energy to come to church to serve God, but we got energy to Monday through Saturday to do whatever needs to be done in town. We'll, we'll drive all over town. We'll piddle around with things. But when it comes to, to God's time, oh, I don't feel like it, or I don't have time. One of the big excuses that, that you hear from people that said about, that haven't read God's word, oh, I don't have time to. Listen, folks, how much time do you need? Do you realize that if you would just commit to reading four chapters a day in God's word, you will have finished reading the entire Bible with days to spare. But, oh, we don't have time. Oh, I don't like it. It, it, it. It's not satisfying as real bread or, or real fish. But that's the type of people that we see here. Rather than worshiping Jesus for who he was, they wanted to receive what they could get. Listen, folks, every man is created to worship. But here's the thing about worship is that worship demands giving up. Worship means surrendering. We don't like that because that means we have to give up ourselves, our wants, our possessions, our pride, our hearts, so that we can worship God. And man refuses to do that. We want to define what worship is. Listen, and when we define that, we don't define it on what God's Word says. We don't we try to define worship on how what well, we feel that definition should be. And we define it in such a way that, that it makes me feel good. Look what the people's response was. And they said, therefore, unto him, what sign showest thee, thou then? That we may see and believe there. What dost thou work? They said in John writes in verse 31, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. For my Father which giveth 
you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto the Lord evermore, give us this bread. Why? Because we don't want, we want to be completely satisfied. In this example that, that Jesus gives, or not so much an example, but, but answering uh, the, the people's request, need to realize that no one was this, that it wasn't Moses that they gave him the bread from heaven. They missed the point. It wasn't Moses, but God the Father. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my laws or not. They were mistaken. Number two is this, that the manna, what they, that sign they wanted, wasn't true bread from heaven. Jesus said this to the people, my Father now gives you the true bread. It was, just, it was just a picture from heaven. The word didomai, there is a is present tense that, that God was, was currently giving them in their presence. They wanted this sign just like their fathers that, that ate bread, the, what they called from heaven, manna. Manna gave physical life. But bread of, the bread of heaven that comes down from heaven gives spiritual life. And Jesus wanted to teach them another lesson in that manna that was in the wilderness was for the children of Israel. This bread that, that Jesus is currently talking about in, in John chapter 6 wasn't just for the children of Israel, but bread from heaven. Bread from heaven is for the whole world. See, as we follow Christ, we find out real quick that Christ isn't just for a select few, but for all those that willingly will take up their cross and follow him daily. Folks, that's what 2022 needs to be about, is following Jesus daily. Because as we find in this account, Jesus makes this comment, I am the bread of life. When we think about that, Jesus says, I am. So he, he, he shows his deity, but he brings in his spirit, I am the bread of life. And bread, listen, bread is provisional. It, it, it carries the nutrients that, that man needs to, to take care of hunger. The nutrients to grow and to build strength. And so in this account, in John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am God, and I will provide everything that you need. You're looking for a, a sign. I go way be beyond a sign. If you put your faith and trust in me, if you believe in me, your provision will be taken care of. You will never hunger. You will never thirst. And so when we think about bread, just for just a few minutes, few moments number one is this bread bread's necessary so jesus says i am the bread of life think about this bread is necessary you know in, in our culture bread bread at a meal is, is optional
In fact, many places to eat do not automatically put a, a, a basket or a plate of bread at your table. But in the culture that Jesus was in, bread was necessary. Bread was the, was the staple of life. Bread was meant to be uh, consumed daily. And, and Jesus here is identifying himself as bread, as the bread of life, declaring that he is our daily need uh, to, to spiritual life. He is our daily need uh, to be satisfied. See, the people here had just experienced this amazing miracle of the provision of, of the fish and loaves. It took care of a, a momentary hunger. But if it was just based on physical food, guess what? This was the next day, and, and the people were hungry again. Jesus wasn't talking about a, a spiritual hunger. But he says, you follow me. I will, I will satisfy you completely. When it comes to food, when we're satisfied, we're full. Bread's necessary for life. If you don't eat, you eventually will die. And so we know that bread's necessary. But something else is interesting about bread. Bread, in some places, is used for cleansing. There are places where you take bread, where, where we may use a, a napkin to, to wipe our face. Bread, you take a piece of bread, and bread is, is used to, to clean the face, to wipe it off. Even in the culture that we, we use bread to clean. Maybe not the face, but how many of you take your bread and, and sop up the, the extra sauce on your plate? You, you use the bread to, to, to make that, that happy plate. You take that biscuit. Why is it you like the, the, the uh, over easy fried eggs? Because you like taking that biscuit and cleaning up the yolk and consuming it. Oh, we love, we love cleaning up that, that extra gra leftover gravy in the plate with bread. And see, bread is used for cleansing. Now get this, folks. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Guess what Jesus does? He cleanses us. We go cleanse ourselves, and yet, guess what? It doesn't take. Because we have to cleanse ourselves the next day and the next day. We take a shower at night, we take a shower in the morning. And it's good for that day, but things happen, and guess what? We take another one. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Listen, you believe in me, not only will you have life, not only will you be satisfied, but Jesus, as the bread of life, cleanses. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And get this, folks, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, I like that. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, there are some soaps that get work on some things. 
but they don't get everything out. And then you'll have to get another type of ingredient that, that breaks down those molecules, those hard to, to, to clean places and things. And there's those, some of those pots and pans that will continuously have those markings. As no matter how hard you scrub, they just won't get completely clean like, like when they were new. But Jesus cleanses from all unrighteousness. It's necessary. Bread is also used for cleansing, but you know what? Bread produces growth. But here's the thing about bread. <laughs> for, for bread to, to produce growth, <laughs> bread must be consumed. I mean, you can sit there and say, oh, I, I, I've got, boy, this is a nice-looking roll. But unless that roll is consumed, it's not going to do you any good. It's just going to sit there, get hard and, and stale. You can have your lunch meat and have whatever bread. You can have a hoagie roll. You can have sandwich bread. You can have rye bread. You can have French bread. Whatever that flavor is. But unless you consume it, guess what? It's not going to do you any good. It must be consumed. It must be digested. It must be used. And when that is done, pardon me, bread produces growth. For bread to provide the, the nutrients and the fulfillment, the satisfaction, it must be consumed. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter how that aroma smells, that fresh bread coming out of that oven. Oh, one of the things I loved about California is you could go to San Francisco and, and, and be outside the, the French bread bakeries. And, and, and when they were baking that fresh French bread, the aroma would just, you could smell it in your car. But you know what? That won't benefit. It may smell good, but that disappears. For that bread to be in any use and, 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 be, and, and be any good, it must be consumed. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Bread produces growth. He wants to produce the growth, but he must be consumed. I am the bread of life. I am the living bread from heaven. Jesus said in verse 51 of our text, bread satisfies. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore stove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And as the living Father hath sent me, I and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat, in, 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 eat manna and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever you talk about a statement that just shook the people you just read it and think boy th this is morbid jesus is talking about eating flesh and, and and drinking blood but what he was saying is you must take all of him Listen, too many people are just like the ones that Jesus was dealing with. They want their physical hunger taken away, and that's it. They want to know what they get out of the deal. They want to, they want to feel good about themselves. 
They like being religious on the outside. They, they talk a good talk. But they resist the relationship that takes place on the inside. See, when we look at the bread that produces growth, it is filling. It does satisfy. My friends, as we strive to, to follow Christ, we see real quick that Christ, as the bread of life, provides everything that we need. Everything. You may be sitting this morning and thinking, I, I'm so glad this past year is over, wondering what's going to happen next, this coming year. Some may be looking, I, I like last year better, I'm not so sure about this coming year. Listen, Jesus as the bread of life satisfies everything that you would need, everything that you would want. He provides everything. He satisfies our soul. He cleanses our lives. But as the bread of life, he also sustains our, our spiritual walk with Christ. Our friends, once again, let us follow Jesus, things happen, difficulties happen, pain happens, sorrow happens. Life, there are the unknowns, but here's the deal. Jesus knows it all. He knows the way. He knows the direction. He knows what we need. If you want to look at it as a trip, he knows it. And also he can provide for it. The question this morning is this, will you follow him? In his best-selling book called Into Thin Air, Don Crockire relates the hazards that plagued some climbers as they attempted to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Andy Harris, one of the expedition leaders, stayed at the peak too long on his descent and in doing so, he became in dire need of oxygen. Harris, the story goes, radioed the base camp and told them about his predicament. He didn't mention that he had come across a cache of oxygen canisters left by the other climbers. But they were all empty. The climbers who had already passed the canisters on their own descent knew they were not empty, but they were full. They pleaded with him on the radio to, to make use of them, but it was to no avail. Harris was starved for oxygen, but he continued to argue with the, that the canisters were empty. You see, the, the, problem was that the, la the problem was that the lack of what he needed had so disoriented his mind that Though he was surrounded by something that could give him life, he continued to complain of its absence. Zechariah suggests that the very thing that he held in his hand was absent in his brain. The lack of oxygen had, had ravaged his capacity to recognize what was right in front of him. And folks, what oxygen is to the body... The bread of life is to the soul. Many. And it, you may be one of them this morning that, that is suffocating and starving and don't even know it. You think that, that you have Jesus figured out. But the problem is we may be way off. Jesus is offering life. While we run around and, and want to fill our, our appetites. And once they get filled, they get hungry again. But Jesus said, I am the bread of life that comes down from heaven. <laughs> you consume me. You consume all of me. You consume my flesh. You drink 
my blood. You take everything that is of me, and I promise you, you will never grow hungry again. Are you following Jesus? Are you, or are you following your own plans? See, you may be watching this morning, and part of following Jesus is realizing that Jesus is, is exactly who he says he is. Jesus came to this earth to be Savior of the world. He said his, his will is to seek and to save that which was lost. See, it's not about being religious. Oh, these folks were religious around Jesus, but it's about having that relationship with Jesus. If you're watching here this morning, have you ever put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Have you ever gotten to a point in your life where you realize that, you know, I am a sinner. There is not a thing that I can do to, to make myself right with God. Have you gotten to that point and then realize that, you know what, Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus did come. Jesus did provide that way. Jesus is the one that fulfills. Jesus is the one that satisfies. Jesus is the one that provides. And you accept that gift of Christ. You see, the gift of Christ, him coming to this earth to die on the cross, provides forgiveness of sins, makes things right with God. His resurrection from the grave defeats death, provides eternity for man in heaven. Listen, you'll truly never be filled without Christ. And it starts with forgiveness of sins and Him becoming Lord and Savior. Consuming Him so that He may fill. Let's pray. Our most gracious time with Father, Lord, we come. We thank You for this time to open up Your Word. Lord, I just ask, Lord, help us follow You this year better more than we ever have in the past and Lord as we read this morning as you reveal yourself to us may we consume you Lord we have wasted so much time playing the part we take the label and what a Christian is is one that completely follows you, consuming you every step of the way. May we consume you, Lord, and you fulfill, provide, satisfy. And Lord, continue to remind us that you are sufficient. And Lord, I pray that if there's one watching today, better to get on our Facebook or YouTube and or they realize that they have never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ let Lord today would be the day they receive salvation speak to their heart help us grow more in you this year and it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray amen